All right, greetings everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Believe it or not, I got a church charter for Light of the World Ministries. So that's why I've been using it. Uh, back uh, about 20 years ago, I guess I wanted to uh, have an actual ministry you know, like a church or something, but then I started finding out, uh, yeah, all the rules and everything. So I guess YouTube's been my ministry for as long as it's up. A uh, couple things. One, like I said before, whoever sent me this uh, USB flash drive from Amazon, who are you? Will you please let me know who you are? I've got it copied and ready to mail it out but i don't know who to send it to um and let's see what else oh bit shoot is dead uh the last three times i tried to load a video well the video loaded but it wouldn't finish processing it's stuck i mean you know 36 hours to process a three minute video i don't think so so they've pretty much banned my work. Plus, there's a bunch of my videos. They show they're there, but when you click on them, it shows zero time for runtime, and they don't play. No audio. Of course, they say, oh, well, we're having problems, blah, 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 whatever. Um, David Ick isn't having a problem. So, you know, or whatever, Ike or whatever his name is. Uh, I've always thought it was Ike. And rhymed with um, a word that starts with a K. I yeah, I don't know. But uh, so BitChute is dead. Um, if you go to my community page or my blogger page, uh, where I showed that video about the uh, AstraZeneca thing, um, one of the uh, a sister in faith is making a audio site of my work so because i anticipate youtube's going to be gone probably sooner than later and i'm not sure uh what i'm going to be doing i might be moving i might not i don't know i'm kind of hoping the lord will give me some kind of a sign but eh, we'll see what happens probably more like a boot in the rear than a sign but um yeah, get off your lazy, yeah, something like that. That's what he had to do to get me to do ministry work, pretty much, you know. Trust me, I did not want to be doing uh, ministry work. And you know what kills me? It When I was in high school, uh, at least my second year of high school, if somebody would have walked up to me and said, Bob... The Lord told me that one day you're going to be a Christian and you're going to be doing Bible studies, uh, Bible studies. I would have probably told him to go to hell and cussed him out. Yeah, seriously. But, uh, oh boy, Lord has some mysterious ways. What can I tell you? All right, now I've covered some of this material in a previous studies but this is for we got to beat it into our skulls right but uh let's take a look what will what are some of the things that'll happen when christ returns in glory now some people think that christ comes uh twice the first time he comes in secret and then he whisks all the believers away and then leads everybody out down here to uh, get their um, to get their jollies by uh, worshiping the beast. Yeah. But the second time when he comes, well, then he comes all the way down and uh, brings his believers with him. Uh, I do not adhere to that. I think that there's two comings, uh, a first coming and a second coming. Well, for Christ, the first coming came almost uh, 
2,000 years ago. And the second coming, well, he doesn't come back two and a half times or one and a half times or whatever. He comes back the second time. However, do you know that there might be two comings of the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast? I was thinking there's probably going to be two man of sins. Uh, I hope you'll stick with me. But before we go into that, let's take a look at what, uh, before you look at a counterfeit, you need to know what the real thing is. You know, you don't want to be able to spot a fake. You want to be able to spot the real deal. Um, somebody makes a copy of the Mona Lisa painting by Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, if you've looked at the real thing and you know it inside and out, you can't be fooled, fooled by the counterfeit. So let's look at what the scriptures, the King James Bible, says about um, the, uh, the real deal. Yeah, this is probably going to be a long study. I could make it a short study, but... Uh, I don't know. If I'm going to go out, I may as well go out with a bang, right? Turn your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 24. And Mark 13 is a companion chapter for end of the world stuff. So let's take a look. And I did an entire playlist on Matthew 24 called Matthew 24 Revealed. So, where I go in depth, well, more in depph I'm just kind of going to glance, gloss over a few of the highlights here. But we're going to take a look at the events that point to the return of Jesus. Now, a lot of Bible preachers, especially those in the Baptist camp, so-called, will say, oh, well, you know, there, nothing has to happen for Christ's return. He could just come at any second. But is that what Jesus said? Uh, well, let's take a look. Matthew 24. Now, I'm going to be going through this kind of quick. So, the, the point is to show you what Jesus said about his return. So, Matthew 24. And you can read Mark 13. And there's a parallel one in Luke I think it's Luke 21 or 22 or maybe 19. I don't remember, but there's three in the Gospels. There's three uh, different perspectives of this event. So Jesus and Jesus went out, departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Hey, Jesus, look at this magnificent temple that uh, Herod spent, you know, what is, I think, 40 and 6 years in building. Isn't it magnificent? And Jesus said unto them, See not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And that happened in 70 A.D. The Rome, Romans, uh, two Roman legions came and they absolutely destroyed Jerusalem and the temple because uh, the you-know-whos made insurrection. You know, when they were trying to get Pilate to have Jesus crucified, they said, well, we have no king but Caesar. And then um, about 33, 34, 35 so years later, they decided, well, we don't want Caesar. But we don't want Jesus either. So, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? What shall be the sign of thy coming? The sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. Well, pre-tribbers say, oh, it's an imminent... It's an imminent rapture. It could happen at any second. There's no signs. 
Uh, did Jesus say, oh, or verse 4, and Jesus answered and said, oh, you got it all wrong. It's an imminent pre-trib rapture. There's no signs. It could happen at any second. No, that's not what he said. Verse 4, and Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. Pay attention. Don't let anybody deceive you. Big, big, big thing to pay attention to. Okay? He said that uh, nobody deceives you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. See, there's going to be more than one false Christ. And they're going to deceive a lot of people. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end's not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Wow. You know, if there's famines, if, you, if Jesus warned you that there's going to be famines, maybe you should make some preparations. What did Joseph do in Egypt? Huh? What did, he, what did Joseph do? Think about that. There should be famines and pestilences, disease. What do you think's going on? And earthquakes in diverse places. Well, guess what? There's been a steady uptick in earthquakes all over the place. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning, not the end. This is just the start, the introduction. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. But you listen to the pre-tribbers and, oh, that's for the Jews. That's not for us. We're the church. Everybody loves us. Just look at Billy Graham and Joel Osteen. Everybody loves them. Don't they? Oh, okay. But Jesus says, afflicted, killed, and hated. Wow, maybe Joel Osteen and Billy, Graham, Billy Goat Graham have got a different Jesus. I don't know. Verse 10. And then shall many be offended. Why? Why are they going to be offended? Because they're afflicted, they're being killed, and they're being hated. That offends them. That offends them. Oh, yeah. In the book of Matthew, in verse 11, uh, chapter 11 and verse 6, Jesus says, And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. I actually did a Bible study on offended. All right, so, verse 9, or verse 10. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. Wow, just turn on TBN, and you can see many. And because iniquity shall abound, uh, that's evil and wickedness. Abound means uh, it's everywhere. The love of many shall wax cold. Yeah, because evil's everywhere. The love of many is going to be cold. But he that shall endure unto the end. What? Jesus, you got it all wrong. All I got to do is say a 30-second sinner's prayer, and I'm saved forever, according to the TV preachers. But that's not what Jesus said. He says in verse 13, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Not a 30-second Billy Goat Graham sinner's prayer. Oh, Jesus, come into my heart. Thank you. I'm saved forever. I, uh, that's not what, that's not what Jesus said. Are we going to believe Jesus or are we going to believe Billy Goat Graham? 
I pick Jesus. I don't know about most the world, but that's just me. Now, I want to kind of skip down on this because, I, you know, <laughs> you can make a several hours study on just Matthew 24. But the Bible says that we just, when you see the abomination of desolation, you know, you see the unholy thing in the temple, uh, don't go back to your house to grab your coat. Flee to the mountains. When you see uh, Jerusalem surrounded by armies, it's very, very possible. Now, that did happen in Matthew 20. Uh, I'm sorry. That happened in 70 AD. And it might happen again. It You never know. It might happen again. And then maybe the false prophet will fa call fire down from the sky and devour uh, the armies that surround Jerusalem. I'm not saying it's going to happen. But I'm saying it is a very distinct possibility. And if there were armies surrounding Jerusalem and some guy gets out there and wipes this entire army out, people are going to believe that God has come. All right, let's face it. But let's go to verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation such as when it's not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here's Christ, or there, believe it not. When the world's telling you, Oh, here's Christ, Christ has come, don't believe it for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders they're going to be able to do miracles people in so much that if 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 it were possible they shall deceive the very elect behold I have told you before wherefore if they shall say unto you behold he is in the desert Go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Uh, sorry, Jesus, you forgot to slip that pre-trip rapture in there. Yeah, lightning coming out of the east and shines even to the west so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Does that sound like a secret rapture? Doesn't, doesn't sound like it to me, but... For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And for those of you that don't know it, eagles are uh, very happy to eat roadkill. But uh, there is actually a vulture called an eagle vulture, believe it or not. So, I don't know. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. Huh. The sun's going to be darkened and the moon's not going to be able to give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth shall mourn uh, all, all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory huh coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory now remember something christ is going to come in the clouds they got a thing called project blue beam uh, they're using lasers and holograms. Uh, the stuff that I've been seeing, um, some people say it's CGI, computer-generated images on YouTube, but I don't know. But then again, there's been hologram concerts. Um, you know, there's no telling the stuff that they have that they're not showing us. I heard reports 
that in the Middle East, they showed an image of Muhammad speaking to everybody in Arabic saying, surrender to the Americans. I don't know how true that is, but I've heard that. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff could be made up. But the thing is, there's going to be signs in the heavens before Christ comes. Now, verse 31. All right, Christ is going to come in the clouds. Remember that. We're going to take a look at that in, Act, in the book of Acts. And then we're going to look at Paul. But verse 31 it says, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So we're going to be gathered together if you're the elect in Christ. And if you believe Jesus, you know, there you go. All right, let's do Acts chapter 1. Verse 1. The former treatise... Have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Why 40 days? Well, flood of Noah. How many days? 40. And how many days did Jesus fast in the desert when his ministry first started? 40. And he hung out with the apostles for 40 days, right? And he, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, so he was giving them a 40-day uh, crash course, I guess you could say. I mean, after all, he spent, what, like three-something years with them? All right, verse 4. And being assembled with them, commanded them that they should not, not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. So what happened in, um, you know, we're talking about the, the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost, uh, everybody was in the room, and there was a mighty rushing wind, and like tongues of cloven tongues of fire rested upon all the disciples. And they were given the, the, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. That's what it's talking about here. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? You see, they know that Israel's going to be returned to being a kingdom. And most of the church world thinks that uh, United Nations creation from 1947 or 48 or whatever it was uh, in the Middle East, they think that's the work of the Lord. The United Nations was founded not on Jesus Christ. Uh, it was founded by um, a bunch of godless people. Satanists, actually, uh, they even had a publishing arm called Lucis Trust. The original name was Lucifer Trust. What a name for a for a publishing arm, huh? You can read about it. Helen Bl Blavatsky, Alice Bailey, um, yeah, and and everybody thinks that this is really wonderful. You know. God's chosen people. Well, chosen for what? That's the question. That's the real question. So if you think the United Nations is fulfilling God's will, will well, <laughs> they are, in a way. They're gathering the tares. Have you ever read the parable of the wheat and the tares? Yeah, they are fulfilling his will. They're, they're 
They're bundling the tares into bundles so that when the fire comes, they're all burned up. That's the prophecy being fulfilled. Boy, I tell you what, point that out in Baptist church and you'll be told to leave so fast you won't know your head will spin, right? It's the Lord that's going to restore the kingdom of Israel, not the Antichrist United Nations. Sorry. Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. All right, now. Here's where we tie into Matthew 24. Verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. He was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. He was taken up into a cloud. Verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men, well, these are angels, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? In other words, why are you standing around here with your mouths open looking up? This same Jesus, which is taken up, taken up, taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He went up into a cloud. He's going to come back in the clouds, isn't that? Okay, so you got Matthew that says that. You got Mark 13. You got Acts chapter 1. Is there another witness? Yeah, you know it. Oh, yeah. All right, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4, verse 17. I know I've covered this a few times, but, you know, this might be some of the most important information you ever can remember in your lives. There's going to be, you know, the, the pre-trib rapture churches teach that Jesus comes first. The Bible teaches the Antichrist comes first, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast. Somebody's wrong. You know, it's, it's insane. And, and they claim, oh, we're fundamentalists. No, you're not. You're a bunch of liars. The pre-trib rapture is not a fundamental doctrine of the faith. Jesus didn't say, believe in me in dispensational truth and the pre-trib rapture and thou shalt be saved. He never said that. I mean, they, they're, honestly, I think they're a bunch of devils. Almost nobody stands up for the truth anymore. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 14. You know what the gospel is? It's right here. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He's going to bring us with him if, if, if we die before he returns. Verse 15, for this we say unto you by the, uh, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. See, those in Christ that are dead in Christ, they're going to come first. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Wow, yeah. Secret raptures always happens with a, a shout, right? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Sorry, not Donald. 
and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So if we're not caught up in the air, in the clouds, to meet the Lord, it's the wrong Messiah. I know I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is probably the most important thing other than your salvation that you could ever know and remember. How many people are going to lose their faith because of the pre-trib rapture lie? Oh, Chaplain Bob, you're wrong about that. Well, I'll prove it to you in the next verse. I'll prove it to you in the very next verse. Then, uh, well, the next, I'm going to finish this up and then it'll, yeah. Then we which are alive and remain shall be got, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now remember, verse 16 said, uh, Descending from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel with the trump of God, right? What trump? What trump? Not Donald. What trump? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, uh, you know, this is why all these Hebrew roots people hate Paul. This is exactly it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. They hate Paul because Paul gives, Paul puts the nail in the coffin for the pre-trib rapture and a lot of other false things. And the Hebrew roots Judaizers. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's right. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This sinful flesh is not going to make it into the kingdom. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. Ah, a mystery. Don't you love good mystery stories? I sometimes do, but not always. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the last trump. Huh. Where are we going to find the last trump in the Bible? Well, I'm going to give you a hint. Good place to look would be the last book of the Bible. And what's the last book of the Bible? Revelation. Revelation talks about the tribulation period, talks about the... Um, the coming of the kingdom and the judgments upon the world for their wickedness. And guess what? Seven vials, seven bowls, seven trumps. Seven trumps. Let's see. One is first, two is second, three is third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, seventh, Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Let's see, the last one would be the first one? No. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth? No. The last one would be the seventh one. Well, guess what? The sixth one is right about the end of the tribulation. The seventh one is the last one. There's not a seventh, there's not a last trump before the tribulation. It doesn't happen. Where do these people come with the idea there's a pre trib rapture? Oh, I know. They're hoping you'll never read the Bible. That's exactly what they're hoping. They want you to have just enough faith to throw a few dollars in that collection plate and not have a changed life and don't pick up the Bible. You know, 
Hey, there's that Christian movie on television, Left Behind. Or, um, yeah, you know, or The Passion of Christ with uh, um, Mel Gibson, where he hired European um, stars who were, um, who did centerfolds for a certain magazine over there, I guess. I don't know if they did centerfolds or not, but last time I mentioned that, um, the video got removed for violating communist standards. I'm sorry, community standards. So, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. The last trump is in the last book of the Bible, and the seventh trump is at the end, the end, the end of the tribulation. There's not a last trump before the tribulation. Oh, Chaplain Bob, you got it all mixed up. You just don't understand. Yeah, right. You know what? False prophets. The Lord has, uh, he's got promises that he made to false prophets, and they're not good. And everybody that treat, pre preaches this stuff as a fact, they're in trouble. Big trouble. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Yeah. At the last trump. All right, let's go to 2 Thessalonians. Uh, chapter 2, verse 1, I guess. Listen. You know, this is why they don't like Paul. Paul gave so many warnings about the, the false Messiah. They got to get rid of Paul. You know, otherwise we'll recognize the false Messiah. Jesus told you false Christ would come first. Well, before we do that, let's, get, let's do the definition of an antichrist. All right, first book of John, chapter 2. Verse 22. 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar? So who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son... The same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. So if you deny the Son, you don't have the Father that sent the Son. You don't have either one. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes, uh, cometh unto the Father but by me. That's the most narrow-minded statement I have ever heard in my life. And you either believe it or you don't. If you think all roads lead to the same place, well, that's fine. You know, say hi to Buddha, say hi to Hare Krishna, uh, Shiva, Kali, uh, Moses, whatever, Muhammad, whatever. Confucians, whatever. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And personally, I believe it. But So that is the definition of an antichrist. But there's more than one. Uh, the Bible records that there are many antichrists. Well, in 1 John 2.18, it says, Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So there are many Antichrists. I think Jerusalem's full of them. But, hey, that's just me. 
Now remember, in Matthew 24, it said that there would be signs and lying wonders. The man of sin is going to be able to do false miracles. Well, lying miracles. Uh, you know, remember, remember when Aaron was in uh, Pharaoh's court and he threw down his staff and it turned into a serpent? And what did the magicians of Egypt do? They threw down their staffs. What did that turn into? Serpents. So Pharaoh's like, Duh, you can do a magic trick. My people can do a magic trick. Big deal. Show me something I don't know. But Aaron's staff, his serpent, swallowed up their serpents. So, uh, you know, Pharaoh must have been like, huh, that's an interesting trick. You know? So, think about it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by your gathering together unto him. What's this chapter about? The second coming. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. How's that for an opening? It tells you. The coming of the Lord and us being gathered by into him, right? Verse 2. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, some of these churches will say, well, you know, you got the day of Christ, and you got the day of the Lord. One's the pre-trib rapture, and one's the uh, second coming, and they're different. Okay, so the day of Christ and the day of the Lord are different? Are they basically denying that Jesus Christ is Lord? I think so, but hey, that's just my opinion. Verse 3, let no man deceive you by any means. Didn't we read that in Matthew 24? Yeah, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and the, that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Now, Paul calls him the man of sin, the son of perdition. You know who else was called a son of perdition? Judas Iscariot, the one that betrayed Christ. There's only two people in Scripture that were called son of perdition. I did a Bible study on that, believe it or not. I did a lot of Bible studies. Over a thousand. So, the man of sin, son of perdition. Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, did this happen in 70 AD? I don't think so. There are people that will say this happened in 70 A.D. I don't think so. So if it didn't happen in 70 A.D., it means it has to happen in the future. And I know I've covered this before. But, you know, this is important, people. Worshiping the false Christ is... There's only... You know, not, not believing... Not believing in Christ, not accepting his his gift of grace, his uh, his sinless life, death, burial, and resurrection, rejecting that as a, a sin that once you die, it's unpardonable. And then there's the unpardonable sin, which is where you attribute the works of Christ and the Holy Spirit to the works of the devil. That's an unpardonable sin. And there's only one group of people that I know of in the entire world that teach that Jesus did his miracles by the power of the devil. And they're over in the Middle East. And no, it's not the Arabs. And then the third unpardonable sin is worshiping the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, worshiping the beast and taking his mark. 
in whatever form it may be. Whether it be a chip, whether it be a vaccination, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning toward a chip. But you know what? You, if you can't buy or sell without a vaccination, well, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. You know, Daniel, the book of Daniel says that uh, in the latter days, knowledge would be increased. Are we in the latter days? Well, each day that passes by, we're one day closer, wouldn't you say? So, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And we're here. We're there, people. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, when I was yet with you, I told you these things. When I was with you, I warned you about this with tears, night and day. Well, that's the Bob translation of Paul's words. He did say with tears. Oh, yeah, he did. You want to read about Paul's tears? Let's read in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. But I determined this with myself, that I would not come again to you in heaviness. For if I make you sorry, who is he then that maketh me glad, but the same which is made sorry by me? And I wrote the same unto you, lest when I come I should have sorrow from them of whom I ought to rejoice, having confidence in you all, that my joy is the joy of you all. For out of much affliction, listen to this, for out of much affliction and anguish of heart, so Paul's got affliction and anguish of heart. I wrote unto you with many tears. Affliction, anguish, and tears, people. Paul cared about his people. And these devils that tell you that Paul's a false apostle, I say to them, go to hell, you devil deceivers. You know, when people tell me, oh, Paul's a false apostle, I know I know what they are. I know what they are. For out of much affliction and anguish of the heart, of heart, I write unto you with many tears that not that ye should be grieved, but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. All right, let's go back to Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, verse 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, if the you-know-whos rebuild a temple for their Messiah, which is not Christ, and Jerusalem's surrounded by armies. And this Messiah causes fire to come down from the sky and devour the entire army surrounding Jerusalem. You better believe the whole world is going to be saying, God has come. I mean, think about it, people. And that's in Matthew 24, that that thing in case you don't remember because that was 40 minutes ago that I was talking about all that verse 5 remember ye not that when I was yet with you I told you these things and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time for the mystery of iniquity the mystery of sin the mystery of evilness for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, some people will say, well, this withholder is the Holy Spirit. I don't think so. Personally, it wouldn't be surprised me if it was Michael the Archangel allowing the devil to do his dirty, uh, to do the, his dirty deeds. Not Michael, the devil, to do the dirty deeds. Uh, because it's the Holy Spirit that convicts people of sin. 
if the Holy Spirit is gone from the earth, nobody's going to get saved. And there's not going to be a lot, but there's going to be people getting saved during the tribulation period. Not many, but there will be a remnant. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed. The devil, the antichrist, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition. He's got several names. The dragon, the old serpent, the devil and Satan, Lucifer. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Didn't I just do a study on, on Job chapter 1 where fire came down from the sky and the wind blew the the house down where his sons were yeah satan does have powers he's on a leash god's got him on a leash right now he's on a short leash but during this time period that leash will probably be a lot longer even him whose coming is after the working of satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. In other words, satanic miracles, people. Satanic miracles. Verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, not Satan, for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion. What is a delusion? It means you believe something with all your heart that's not true, but yet you believe it is true, but it's not. You know, there's people in mental institutions that say, I'm Jesus Christ. They believe that, but they're not. You know, or they might think they're Buddha or I don't know, but they're not. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned. Who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Oh my God, Bob, that's 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 Calvinism, Bob. That's a heresy. That's horrible. Oh my, God chose us from, oh, you know, I mean, seriously, when you, you, Christians are not allowed to be chosen people, only those in the Middle East that are technically antichrist, they're the only ones that are allowed to be the chosen people, according to the demon nominational churches. Yeah, I know, I'm being overly dramatic, but, you know, this is why I gave up trying to go to church. You know, I used to be really humble and soft-spoken when I'd go to church. And, you know, they they would say something that I knew was wrong. And I was like, oh, ex excuse me, um, can I ask you a question here? Um, you say this, but what about this in the Bible here? And I'd, sh you know, read it aloud and says, how does that line up? You know, uh, you say one thing, but the Bible says the opposite. Well, can you explain that to me? Because I'm confused. I don't understand. I mean, I wasn't confrontational and jumping up and down and screaming. You do this about three times, and they're, uh, then they come to you in love and give you the right boot of uh, fellowship, out the door, that is. 
and uh, you're not welcome here, you're divisive. Because they know who they are, and they know who you are. And oil and water don't mix. So, but we are bound to give thanks all way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Boy, you do that in a free will Baptist church and you'll be kicked out. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the Muslims uh, have believed, they believe, now I know I've covered this in a previous study, but I'm going to cover it again. The Muslims also believe in an antichrist, man of sin, son of perdition, the beast, whatever, and that he's going to come and deceive the people. And then they believe the Messiah will come and destroy him. Believe that. They do. They do believe that. Is there going to be a false messiah, number one, and then be destroyed by false messiah, number two? I think that's a very, very likely scenario. I, I honestly believe that's how it's going to happen. I'm, you know, that's just my opinion. I, there's not a lot of stuff there. I'm just going by uh, Islamic theology here. But they're looking for a false messiah and then the messiah. And that would fool them. And you got basically almost, I don't know, three quarters of a billion Arabs in the world that would probably believe it if this happened. And of course, you got a billion something Catholics that if uh, the Pope says it, well, they'll, you know, if they see all these miracles happening, they'll believe anything. So, you know, if the Pope says it, hey, it's got to be true, right? And if you get all your TV preachers in the uh, demon nominational churches and your uh, rabbis, well, how many people would. Uh, and if he could do miracles, even the communist, atheist communists would, would bow down to him, especially if he could bring fire down from the sky and burn them up. And, uh, you know, this is the kind of Messiah that, you know, the Jews are looking for. And what about India? India would uh, certainly uh, believe, you know, if they could do uh, miracles like that, they'd believe it. Everybody would fall for this. All right, I'm going to do a part two. And uh, remember, everybody, whoever sent me this USB thing from uh, Amazon, uh, you know, let me know. I don't know who to send it to. Uh, PalmBeachWeddings at gmail.com or leave me a couple comments. I do not always get notifications when there's comments. I mean, and some of the comments vanish. Uh, that happens a lot. Thank you, uh, Tube. But uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.